The Radio Wemo Breakfast. Kiwi. Kiwi. Well, you'd think it would be the stuff of science fiction. Bad guys using the internet to bring down power grids, compromise power plants, and attempt to cripple a country's national security. Well, it um, could indeed possibly be a reality. There's a worm out there, a virus, if you will, that is crawling around the internet. It's called Stuxnet, and it is causing a lot of concern, more concern than your average worm or average virus. Steve Martin from Symantec is along to um, tell us all about it and why it's of such great concern. Hello to you, Steve. Morning. Morning. Now, um, Stuxnet, it's not brand new, is it? It has been around a little while. Uh, look, its origins date back to uh, 2009, which is when we believe it first started being developed. Uh, but we've seen it uh, in the wild for the last uh, four or five months. Mm. So why is this one of more concern than, than your average other worm that, that, that's out there? Well, previously it was only theory that criminals could control physical infrastructure. This is the first worm that we have ever seen that uh, turns that into reality. So with this technology, with this malicious software, criminals are able to control physical industrial control systems. So turn on or off pipelines, uh, impact on cooling, open gates, uh, floodgates, for example, on a dam, uh, any number of things that are, that are to do with control of physical uh, uh, manufacturing equipment or industrial equipment. Well, so that's a bigger deal than being able to control um, a, a browser or um, turn a computer on and off. Yes, very much so. Uh, you know, if, if in the wrong hands, as obviously this, uh, this software is, um, you know, the, those people could control complete power grids for, for countries or for cities, uh, could control water systems, so, so the implications are quite significant. Um, there has been some thought out there that, um, that this is actually targeted towards Iran and that it's been developed to uh, bring down an Iranian power grid. Yeah, some 60% of all infections that we've discovered have come out of Iran. So uh, it very much looks like a, a targeted or shaped attack into, into that country. Uh, and uh, although it's very hard to actually work out what the, uh, the authors of this software are trying to achieve, it does very much look like they're targeting the uh, nuclear power station in Iran. And does it only target Windows computers? And, and, and do these systems that run, say, power grids or dams or, or whatever uh, in infrastructure, do they have to be running a Windows system? No, that's, uh, that's what's really interesting about this piece of software. Um, it is specifically targeting a, a Siemens operating system. The Siemens is, is one of the leaders in, uh, in control systems, industrial control systems. Now, what's interesting is that uh, those industrial control systems are generally not connected to the Internet or to anything else. So in order to control them, you need to uh, program an update and then put it onto a USB stick and insert that into your uh, industrial system. Right. And so what happens here is that uh, the software is targeting Windows PCs, infecting those PCs, waiting for a USB stick to be stuck in it so that you can then infect the USB stick in the hope of then infecting the control system. So it's quite a complex and multi-layered attack. So it sounds like it would have to actually jump through a few hoops before it actually made it onto those uh, Siemens systems. Very much so. Mm. Uh, it's a very patient type of attack. Mm. I'm talking with uh, Steve Martin from Symantec about the Stuxnet worm, uh, which is a you know, quite a dangerous virus out there, a virus uh, or worm out there that could um, uh, attack and bring down um, uh, power grids or um, or affect a country's national security. What, what, Steve, what kind of resources would be required to actually make something like the Stuxnet worm? Well, again. Uh you know, this appears to be the probably the best written piece of malicious software we've ever seen. We estimate it's taken 10 people somewhere in the order of six months to create. Uh, so it's a, it's a massive investment in time and resources. Uh, those that have written it have also needed to have access to industrial control systems so that they could test out their, their software and, uh, and make sure that it works as, though, as they're trying to make it to, as they designed it to do. So this doesn't sound like your average teenage geek who's out to have fun. 
Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, again, we don't know who the authors are. Very, very difficult to, to trace that down. Uh, but it does suggest that uh, this could well be a state-sponsored uh, attack. And if it's if if the attack is designed to um, to take to affect um, uh, Iran's national security, um, does that lend some clues as to where the attack is coming from? Look, I suspect it does. Uh, I'm I'm no expert on geopolitics, so I wouldn't like to uh, to guess who might be behind it, or or, or if a country might be behind it. Uh, it could be uh, you know, could even be a private organisation that uh, that is trying to achieve some sort of goal. Uh, but uh, you know, in the past, cyber warfare has been the, you know, been a thing of movies. Mm. Uh, this code clearly demonstrates that it is uh, is now physically possible. And what are security companies like Symantec now doing to uh, protect systems against the Stuxnet worm? Well, Symantec are able to stop uh, this uh, Stuxnet worm infecting your Windows PCs which is the precursor to, to then infecting your industrial control system. But uh, it is important to note that uh, you know, USB sticks, when they're, in, when they're inserted into your control system, might not be coming from your PCs. They might be coming from your uh, suppliers or, or other, uh, other people that need access to your control system. So one of the very important things to do if you do have uh, you know, manufacturing industrial controls is to ensure that your USBs, any USBs that are connected to those systems are thoroughly scanned mm. before being inserted mm. and that you are in control of who can and cannot uh, insert systems into your controls and, uh, and update them. And if it's taken, say, 10 people and six months and a whole bunch of resources to put this worm together, uh, is, uh, are companies like Symantec also throwing that kind of resource in the war against it? Uh, yes, yeah, so we have uh, we, we have quite an army of people located around the world, uh, and uh, you know, their job is to identify all types of malicious code going on around the world and ensure that we are providing protection for our customers. Um, so this is, uh, at the end of the day, one of of many many millions of of malicious code uh, that is that is floating around the internet. Uh, but that's uh, you know that's largely Semantic's job is to um, is to identify this software uh, and ensure that our customers are protected against it. Brilliant, I guess so. Um, so customers or, or just general internet users, computer users, should make sure that their machines are up to date and all patched, and also their virus software is up to date as well. Steve Martin, really uh, appreciate your time. My pleasure. And it's Steve Martin from Semantic talking about the Stuxnet worm.